Sometimes when you have the opportunity to introduce a speaker, it's particularly in the dance world, so that's a great chance to list all the titles they've won. You would be here now for the next half an hour probably if I was to start to do that with the gentleman who's going to talk to you now. Quite simply, he's the man who lectures the lectures. He judges the judges. He's the man who's done it all. And I'm sure you will very give, I give a very big welcome to Mr. Anthony Murphy. Thank you. Thank you very much. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, or good afternoon, boys and girls. Now, I planned my three sessions with you today, uh, but I didn't realise, of course, if they were participating lectures or not. So, you've just sat down for an hour. I want everybody to stand up now. And shake your legs around a bit and just free off a little bit because I don't want you falling asleep in my lecture. <laughs> okay, so just, you know, relax and because uh, I've got some, maybe some surprising things to tell you. <laughs> Okay, so everyone can sit, you can sit down now. We've got the blood running again. <clears throat> now, you know, the old brain doesn't remember everything now, so I, there was a day when I walked onto a lecture floor and I never took notes with me. Now, I've got pages of it. But they're, they're not notes, they're reminders. And I'm looking at your XPLO 2013, which we're here today, the new era of education in dancing. Well, I don't think I'm the right guy to do this lecture, because I didn't know there was a new era. But I think there is something deep in that, and that is some of the outrageous, and I'll say it again, outrageous, things that we're seeing on the competition floor nowadays. In fact, I've, I've just penned an article for, some, for a particular overseas thing and I've called it Ballroom Dancing Gymnastics Section or Evening Dress Section because that's what it's becoming. We're losing the art. So, I'm going to read something to you first because you will be participating in my second and third lecture. But this one is for you to listen to and a little bit of visual. Page two. I'll read this to you as I wrote it. To become a successful competitive dancer <clears throat> requires much understanding and the, of the fundamentals of natural body position, <clears throat> notice I said natural body position, okay. to develop a strong but apparent effortless movement. Having achieved the correct stance, dancers must be taught, now I'm directing it to the coaches, and understand as early as possible that good dancing requires very good and strong feet, which of course means correct footwork and foot usage. This is the foundation we must instill on our young dancers in order to achieve long-term improvement. The easiest thing for a coach to do is what we call the quick fix. Change your choreography, right? change your hairstyle, do whatever you like, but don't work on your fundamentals. It takes time and patience by both teacher and pupil, but ensures a rewarding result. Unfortunately, and please ladies and gentlemen listen to this part very carefully because the remainder of my lecture is based on, around this. It takes time and patience by both teacher and pupil to ensure a result. Unfortunately, many dancers today try to start at the top. This only produces a synthetic performance with bad leg actions and often poor feet. The practice of all basic fundamentals is essential in achieving quality and artistic impression. 
So therefore, my lecture today, ladies and gentlemen, is going to be very much about posture, but I've listed it in two parts. I've got mechanics, posture, of course, lower body, lower body, and leg lines and feet. Leg action. I see so many dancers today that they think the more times they go around the floor, the better the Judy feathers are going to like it. The higher they jump in quick step, the better we'll like it. Nothing should be, could be further from the truth. Feet. Right, I've got three subheadings for feet. Footwork, foot pressure, and foot styling. And I shall endeavour to show you all the things that we very often see as adjudicators and as coaches that we don't like. So, required motions and actions. Rise and lowering. Notice I don't use the word, as we have in our technique books, rise and fall. Because fall to me means something like that. Right? I'm rise and lowering. And a very famous coach said to me one day when I was an active competitor, he said, he said, any fool can rise, but it takes a good dancer to go down. And he was very, very true, very correct. Rotation. You've got two kinds of rotation. You've got the rotation in the sense of alignment in the room. I'm facing diagonally wall, I'm back in diagonally center, I'm back in line of dance. That's our amount of turn. And then we've got the individual and the personal rotation that is between you and your partner. If I turn one-eighth, my partner must turn one-eighth. And I can tell you, ladies and gentlemen, today, that most of the boys are unable to turn in that sense because of the girl's ridiculous top position. Now, some of you had some lessons with me yesterday, and you'll know the first thing I did to you in a couple of two or three incidents was to change the setup. We've got other things as well, like swing, CBM and CBMP. Our pioneers of dance, when they laid down the techniques way, way back in the 20s and the 30s, they were very clever and astute people. They, I feel they had a notion of how dancing was going to develop because they knew that two bodies can't dance together constantly, which is one of the greatest should be one of the greatest judging criteria, right? Two bodies together all the time, no gapping, no, no dropping the hips away. They knew that it could only be done by CBM and CBMP. You have to understand those. And there's something that we've got embellishment. Sway is a wonderful embellishment to our dancing. But sway is never physically put in. Sway is a development of a swinging side and a softening side or stabilizing side. Yeah? So, those are the ba basically things that we're going to talk about. And I'm just going to put my notations down now. But before I do, you will have heard of the late, great Bill Irving. He once said, we were judging together at a, at a, a European national championship. I won't say which country. And the technique was appalling. They moved, they jumped, and they were fast. But their, their technique was appalling. And he wrote an article and he said, I will never throw the technique book out of the window. So I want everybody to remember that. Never throw the technique. Now, I unfortunately cannot play the piano. I've always wanted to play the piano, but dancing took over my life. I didn't have time for, for, the, for, the, for the piano, but I admire anybody who can sit down and just play. But what does a concert pianist do every day? He practices his scales. Right? So I, I expect we've got some musicians here today or people who can play. What do these wonderful violinists do? Right? They practice all the fundamentals of, of, of what's going to create or make that instrument come alive. And yet we come to dancing and we have 
juvenile sections where we have a restricted syllabus and we try to show them how to use their feet and one thing and another. And what happens? They get to 16 and a half, 17, 18, they get into the youth, uh, throw it all out the window now. Right, let's go. So, I'm going to now put the microphone down because I need two hands. And I'm going to ask for a little assistance because you can't just visualize what I want to change in the attitude. Right. And I'm going to ask first of all, Christina, can you just come onto the floor a moment, please? Can you hear me if I talk like that? Yes. Good. Yeah. What I want you to consider is, and we've just heard about a lot about attention and how it affects you. But I have to say that what I what I see in lessons in where I'm judging, the way you come together creates so much tension. You can't, you can't be in that you can't breathe. So your problems are, you're out of balance. So, what we see is something like this. Can you give me a, give me a special slide? Right, do, do, do the one you had yesterday before I changed it. <laughs> right, okay. Now, now, I'm facing diagonal wall, right? And my gorgeous partner's back in wall. Right, so can I walk from there? Of course I can't. Right. Now, I want to do a natural turn in the walls. Now, I've got my, my, my partner in it to put up a big time. Right. So now I start my natural turn. Right. I get to there. She can't open this side. So now I've broken my left side. I'm swaying, I'm swaying the wrong way. That affects my whole action. Now, so what I say to people now is, if we were building a house, what do we start with? Foundation. Foundation. Right, you don't, you don't, the roof doesn't arrive at the building, right, does it? Right. So we don't start with the roof, we start with the foundation. So we're talking about balance. So what I want to do is, thinking about, there's my foundation, right, on my feet, on my legs, my base, here. Then, when we build the foundation, we consider the walls. And then, once we build the walls, we put the roof on the top. Now the important thing to remember is that when we move, we always have to have a foundation under the head or under the roof. So what we do now is that I'm sick and tired of the girls coming into me and setting me up. When they come forward like this, I can go to sleep. I'm questioning now. <laughs> Right, now she's thrust her hips forward at me, right? This foot is sticking outside the man's left side, right? And she's hanging out here. And she thinks, she thinks she's got a, a big top. But in actual fact, can you do one of those for me? Right, the other wrong way. In actual fact, if you just come from there now, you're very close. Right, it's only you think you've got space because there's no one in front of you. Okay, so, of course, we want to see that beautiful feminine curve, which is something that doesn't is not produced from the outside. It's produced from the feet through the inner core of the body. Now, you heard Alex talk a lot about fundamentals about, about his core. Now, whether you're a ballroom dancer, a Latin dancer, a ballet dancer, a tabletop dancer, I don't care what, you need, you need a core, you need a centre. So you go and say that, you know, if you stand like that, it's no good. Right, so you feel it in a centre. Now, the two most dangerous words in dancing are what? Shape. That's one word. <laughs> The two most dangerous words in dancing is to stand up. As soon as you stand up, you do something like this. Here we go. Right. 